What's going on guys, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be changing a wheel bearing on a 2015 Subaru Outback. The first thing we're gonna do is take the lug nuts off and that requires a 19 mil socket. All right. Before we start taking things apart, especially if you plan on doing this on the ground, the first thing we wanna do after taking the wheel off is CV axle nut, this is a 32 millimeter. If you look close over here, there's a like a locking mechanism. Usually that's punched in to prevent the axle nut from spinning back out. Grab yourself a punch of some sort and a hammer. We're gonna go in there and try to hammer out that mechanism so that we can spin this 32 mil off. So hammer this out, take the wheel, take the center cap out of the wheel, put the wheel back on, put it on the ground, Grab your 32 mil with your extension, put it on here, break it loose. Once this is loose, then you can go ahead and take the wheel back off and prop it back up. There you go. Right. So once you get the axle nut off, technically it's a one-time use, so it's highly recommended if you get yourself a new one before you do this job. So just to make your life a little easier later on in the job, what I like to do when we're at this point is try to loosen up the CV axle from the inside of the wheel bearing. And what I found works well is like a the top of a ball pin or a ball peen hammer. I don't know what these things are called. You put it right here or you can grab yourself a center punch or maybe a piece of wood. Whatever you do, you don't want to be banging the hammer on this because it could damage the surface and then later have a, a hard time trying to get the CV axle nut on as well as we don't want to damage the threads. So just like that, give it a couple of whacks. All right, and it should be loose for us when we get to it. Next, we're gonna go ahead and take this brake caliper assembly off. Now you have the option to either take apart the brake caliper or just take the whole assembly. If you want to take apart the brake caliper, you can remove these two 14 mils and then prop this up but I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the two 17 mils that hold the whole assembly together. Grab yourself a 17 millimeter socket and also a longer wrench to give yourself some leverage when taking this off because these are uh, on there pretty tight. Once that's loose, let's go and loosen up the other one before we take it all the way off. So once we get those two 17 mils out, grab yourself a bungee cord or a ratchet strap in my case. And we're gonna go ahead and pry this brake caliper assembly off. And just gonna go ahead and hang it here. You don't want this to be hanging by the brake line. That'll damage the brake line. So once we have the caliper over here hanging, we wanna go ahead and take this rotor off. Since we live in Michigan, rust is an issue and I'm pretty sure this thing's caked on pretty good. You can see it doesn't wanna come off. Grab yourself a little mallet or a hammer, give it a few whacks around the, the rotor if you'd like. Grab yourself a two by four or a mallet and you could put the two by four on this side and whack the two by four. Just don't start whacking the surface of the rotor. Also by design, You'll see these two threaded holes. Uh, usually it's an M18 bolt. You can run an M18 in there and what that does is as you run the bolt in, it pushes the, the rotor out. But I'm just gonna go the hammer way. All right, you can see all the rust that was holding it in place. Set this aside. Once we get the rotor off, now you can grab yourself a 14 mil socket and we're going to remove the four 14 mils that are holding the bearing assembly to the spindle.
just two. There's three. There's four. Power Tools makes all the difference in the world. Highly recommend. I'll go ahead and insert links in the description down below to this baby right here. So right after we get these 14 mil bolts out, we wanna go ahead and get this ABS sensor out of the way just so we don't damage it. To get this out, let's say 10 mil. Don't go full ugga dugga on it yet. Just loosen it by hand first. Once it's loose, then you can get it out. All right. And then this should really just kind of pull it out and set that aside. So once we get the four 14 mil bolts that are holding the wheel bearing assembly to the spindle. The right way to probably do this is remove the whole spindle from the car and get it pressed out or there's also puller tools that you could probably borrow from your local automotive store. But when you've been in the game for this long, I just usually resort to my tools of persuasion. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab my hammer over here, give it a few whacks behind this part. It doesn't matter if we damage this because we're replacing it. Once I whack it a few times over here, it'll give me a little gap on this side then I should be able to push in a, uh, a wedge of some sort, whether it's a flathead or pry bar. All right, so I gave myself a little gap. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and pry it out with a pry bar or flathead. Took some persuasion, but we got it. If you live in a neighborhood where they like peace and quiet, uh, maybe get a press. Before we install the new wheel bearing on, what I wanna do over here is there's a whole bunch of rust caked on as well as rust on a surface on the inside. Just grab yourself a wire brush or a piece of sandpaper, something rough. We're gonna go ahead and clean off this area, clean off the inside as best as we can. Then we're gonna grab some anti-seize put some anti-seize over here before we install the new wheel bearing. So here's the new wheel bearing. I went ahead and grabbed this off of Amazon. I'll insert a link in the description down below. Moog is a pretty good brand, well known. So went ahead with Moog. Before I install this, I'm gonna grab myself some anti-seize and apply some on the, the mating surface, basically wherever the metal is going to be touching the metal on the spindle. I'll go ahead and insert a link in the description as well for anti-seize. So when we go to install this on, don't forget there's this like dust shield or some sort of shield. Looks like it protects debris from going to the wheel bearing. So that goes on first. I'm pretty sure that goes around the CV axle.
All right, once you get the holes lined up, you can grab one of the four bolts that go on the back and we can start threading them on by hand. Once we have all 14 millimeter bolts threaded on by hand, I'm gonna go ahead and grab our tool here. And what I wanna do is, I'm going to basically like lightly secure them in a star pattern. So I'm gonna go one and then two is going to be the diagonal, uh, the diagonal bolts across from that. And then I'll do the same thing up top. I'll do the top one, over, top one over here and then bottom one over here. And what that does is it helps seats the bearing nice and even on the spindle. So once we get those lightly secured on and looks like we've got our bearing kind of seated onto the spindle, we're going to go ahead and grab our torque wrench and torque these down to spec. From some research, it looks like these are going to be torqued down to 48 foot pounds. I've got my cool torque wrench here, got this off Amazon as well. What's cool about this is it's digital as far as adjusting it. You just pull the knob down, we're going to adjust it to 48. That's good enough. Once you have it set to what you want it, just go ahead and click it in. Let's go ahead and secure. So other cool thing about this is it's got a mechanical uh, mechanism to let us know that we've reached our limit right there. And same thing, I like to do the star pattern. If you want to make life easier for the next person who does this wheel bearing job, you could go ahead and apply some anti-seize over here, but I think we'll be fine. We're going to go ahead and install the rotor. And then to hold the rotor in place, what I like to do is grab just one of the lug nuts and just hand tighten it on there just to hold it in its spot. That should be good enough. Go ahead and grab our brake caliper assembly. And then try to feed it on to the rotor. All right, once we have our brake caliper assembly on the rotor, we're gonna go ahead and grab our 217 mils and fish them through. Make sure you always thread them by hand first. So once we have the 217 mils secure, we're gonna go ahead and adjust our torque wrench to 88.5 foot pounds. 88 foot pounds right here. There we go. Let's get it secure. And just for reference, if you did remove these two 14 mil bolts from the caliper, when you go to secure them back on, it is 20 foot pounds. But don't forget, we still have to install our ABS sensor. For the ABS sensor, you just seat it back in, grab your 10 millimeter bolt right here. You always wanna thread things by hand first, and then you secure it. Go. For this bolt, we're just going to call it German spec, Guten Tight. 
Don't go too crazy on it. There you go, just nice and hand tight. And we should be good. Next, we're gonna go ahead and install our brand new axle nut. Always wanna thread it by hand. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install the wheel back on the car, but before we put the wheel back on, grab yourself something to knock out the center cap. So I'm just gonna use the end right here. Just gonna go ahead and give it a light little tap and that just pushes it right out. Make sure you grab this off the ground because you don't want to step on it and break it. All right, we'll hold that in place and you always want to start every thread by hand. You have everything threaded on by hand. We're gonna go ahead and grab, well, I'm gonna grab my Aga Daga tool. Okay, what's cool about this Milwaukee gun, it's got the one key, so setting number four, you could actually go into an app in your phone and program it to what foot pound torque you want. And I have mine programmed to uh, 88 or 90 foot pounds, which is what these lug nuts call for. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the star pattern and the star pattern is, you know, just draw a star. Gonna go light the first time just to get them seated. All right, and now I'm gonna go ahead and torque them down. All right, since we removed the center cap, that gives us axle to the CV axle nut right here. We're gonna go ahead and put this on the ground and torque that down to spec. Once the car's on the ground, we're gonna go ahead and grab our torque wrench and we're going to set it to 162 foot pounds. Okay, secure. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and grab our punch and just line it up with that groove. Give it a good, give it a good whack right here. Then we'll finish up the job by putting our lovely center cap. That just goes on there and nice and secure. So that is how you change the wheel bearing on a 2015 and up Subaru Outback. It is late, I'm tired, I'm gonna go to sleep. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any comments, drop them down below. That being said, see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.